QuickBooks Online 2023. Set up inventory items. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our Geek Ray Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have open the free QuickBooks Online test drive sample company. If you want these two open at the same time, I suggest using the incognito mode or another browser. You can open the incognito mode if using Google Chrome with the three dots and then new incognito window and then search for QuickBooks Online test drive. We will be using the test drive to be comparing and contrasting the business and accounting view. Get great guitars being in the accounting view, the sample company in the business view. If you want to change between the two views, you can go to the cog drop down and switch between the accounting and business view here. In prior presentations, we set up the company file. We looked at some of the preferences in the COG dropdown. We looked at the general ledger provided to us by Intuit. Now we're entering our beginning balances. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources, such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. So we are imagining we had another accounting system prior to starting QuickBooks Online, that, and these are the beginning balances from that system. Now we're going to go into each of these, add them one at a time. The other side is going to go to some kind of equity account, and then we'll adjust the equity accounts after we have entered them all. I'm going to start with some of the more complex items, and that's going to be the inventory asset, probably the most complex item if we're tracking inventory. So we've got the 2,896 here. Now you would think if I'm going to put that into the QuickBooks system, that all I would have to do is like a journal entry. So if you if you know accounting in terms of journal entries, you'd probably say, I'm just gonna hit the plus button, enter a journal entry, and I'll just increase with a debit the inventory account. But I can't do it simply that way if I'm tracking inventory in the system on a perpetual inventory system. In other words, I want QuickBooks not only to track the dollar amount, but also the number of units that we have on hand. Therefore, we're going to have to enter the inventory items. So that is located under the sales tab, which you might see the customer center, you might call it, and then products and services at the bottom. If you're in the business view, it would be on the get paid and pay tab, and then product and services. And so these are the things that we actually sell. In a prior presentation, we kind of practiced with this by setting up service items. Now we're gonna set up the inventory items. Now, as we enter the inventory items, if we put a beginning balance into the system, QuickBooks will then record a transaction for the cost of those inventory items. So in other words, if I hit the plus button up top, we put the service items in last time. If you look at the service items, they're a lot less detailed in terms of the data input. If I look at the inventory items, closing that out, new, inventory item let's just go through it here we've got the name we've got a number if applicable a category meaning we might have multiple inventory items that are in a certain group we might sell guitars versus basses versus drum sets and group them in those categories having various different ones in the category we can have a picture of it which actually could be quite useful if you have different people doing the data input so they can see what is being purchased you've got the initial quantity on hand which would only be used when you're first setting up the file as we are doing here. So we're gonna be using that as of date. So this is gonna be the date that they're gonna enter a transaction for that initial quantity. The reorder point, that's gonna be, if we get low, we're gonna reorder at that point in time. And then we've got the inventory asset. The inventory asset is the account that's gonna be increasing when we buy the inventory, decreasing when we sell the inventory 
description is going to show up in the sales forms that being the sales receipts and the invoices sales price what we sell them for the the income account that will be impacted when we sell the items notice these two accounts seem somewhat redundant to me sales and sales of products so i would probably go and make one of those inactive and use the other one and then we've got the purchase information uh, that's going to be what's on the description form on the purchasing side of the inventory when we buy with a bill a check an expense form or either of those and this is the cost what we pay for them as opposed to what we sell them for cost of goods sold is the expense account that we expense when we sell the inventory in other words when we sell the inventory we have a revenue account increasing and we also have an expense account the cost of us consuming the inventory in order to generate the revenue that's cost of goods sold and a preferred vendor if there's a vendor that is specific to this inventory account now notice usually oftentimes we will have sales tax in the united states which will be dependent on the locality of the business it'll be a state and local in other words instead of a federal tax that can be found on the left hand side under taxes here and so we'll deal with sales tax later by the way on the business view there's also a taxes tab so you, you all notice that if you're going to add a whole lot of items you might want to set up the, the taxes first so then you can have another line item which will apply to whether something is taxable or not because with the sales tax uh, the thing that drives whether the sales tax is going to be applied or not is primarily the item. We have to say to the item whether it's taxable or not. Uh, if So therefore, we'd have to set this up and then we'll have that option. So we'll do that a little bit reversed. We'll enter the items and then I'll go back in and we'll set up the sales tax and then apply the sales tax uh, to the items that we have set up. So let's go back on over to the sales on the left hand side. So if I was to enter these, we could enter them one by one that way, or we can import them, which is what we might want to do as we're uh, starting a new company file. If we have a bunch of items that we got, say, from our prior accounting system. And uh, so let's go on over. This is what our items are going to look like. So I'm going to imagine we got this or put this together from our prior accounting system. We've got an item name. The sales description, purchase description, cost, sales price, cost of goods sold, income account, asset account, quantity on hand, sales tax, and as of date. So these should mirror basically the data input forms we saw when trying to enter them one at a time. So what I'm going to do now is say, okay, I'd like to import this. Let's pull this over here. And I'm going to say, let's go to the import options. Same process we did before except now we have inventory items so we're going to need more stuff the required fields include if you're importing inventory we need the product name product type quantity quantity as of date those are the minimum that you need i'm going to download their their file and i'm going to try to use their headers again so that we line up exactly with their headers to my headers and i'll do that enabling editing by trying to line up their headers up top to exactly what I have. And then I'll just copy and paste my data into their Excel worksheet so that I can use their formatting uh, for it. So it should work as cleanly as we can get it to work. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna remove this. I'm gonna put my cursor on the nine, right click and delete it. And then see if I could just mirror this to what I have. So I'm gonna say, okay, what do I have over here? I've got an item name and they've got, let's see if I could put this kind of side by side, put this side by side like that. And so I'll say the item name is gonna be the product and service name. Notice I have a short name here, which you might call the number, the SKU, but I'll keep that as the name that I think will show up on the dropdown if I keep it here. And then you've got the sales description. So what I'll do is I'll say, let's take this. I'm gonna copy that under the product name and then the sales and purchase descriptions are the same so these are the these are the names these are guitars i might not spell them wrong right or whatever so <laughs> bear with me these are going to be the be types of guitars an epiphone les paul epiphone standard pro and so on so i'm going to paste that here and then we've got the sku i'm not going to use so i'm going to put my cursor on column c 
and delete that. Just gonna delete it. And then the type is gonna be an inventory item. So I'm just gonna copy the inventory item and I'll paste that on all of them. That's gonna be inventory versus a service item, for example. The sales price. So the sales price I had right here, that's this column. So I'm just gonna copy my numbers for the sales price and put that here. That's how much we're gonna sell per unit. And then the income account. The income account is, is so now I can look up the income account. And, and notice, I wanna kind of use the default income account that QuickBooks wants to use. So if I, if I close this out for a second and I hit the drop down, or if I hit new inventory, you can see that it wants to use that sale of product income. So I'm gonna use that just to note where that is. If I go to the, if I didn't like that account, I could then go to the the uh, item here. We can go into our accounting and go into the chart of accounts and then scroll down and say, okay, where's my inventory accounts? They're down, my income accounts, they're down here and they're using that sales of product. So sales of product. So no, notice that this one seems somewhat redundant. So maybe I don't want sales up here. Otherwise I might get confused between the two. So I'm gonna make this one inactive by going to the left and say, uh, make inactive. And so now I shouldn't get confused between the two, hopefully. And if I scroll back down, we've got the, the income account sales of product income. So then I'm gonna copy that and go back on over here and say, okay, let's do that one sales of income. So copy that and paste that. And then the purchase description is going to be the same. So here's our purchase description. These are just going to be the name of the guitar. This is what's going to be populating on the when we buy forms, bills, checks, or uh, expense forms, the purchase cost what we buy them for. I'm going to say is this so we buy them for less than we sell them for, obviously, because that's how we're gonna make money. And notice these are not accurate prices. I'm just kind of making up numbers here. And then the expense, the expense account is cost of goods sold. So cost of goods sold. And then the quantity on hand, the quantity on hand, I'm gonna say is here. So this is how many guitars I currently have in inventory by item. And so this is the thing that's actually gonna enter a transaction into the system. And then the reorder point, I'm not gonna put a reorder point. So I'm gonna try to delete it. So at, or maybe I'll just put zero when it gets to zero. Cause I think that's a required field maybe. And then we've got the inventory asset account, which I believe is just inventory, but let's double check it over here. If I scroll back up top, I think we have an inventory account. So it's just in, so now again, they have two of them. They've got inventory and inventory asset. Those two look redundant to me. I don't want to get confused between the two. I don't know why they add two like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the plus button and go down to my down to my uh, sales tab and see what the default is when I make a new inventory item. And I'm gonna say, where do they like putting the inventory? They wanna put it into inventory asset. Okay, so I'm gonna copy inventory asset. I'm gonna put that over here. So inventory asset, and that needs to be copied down. And I'm gonna, and I'm gonna get rid of that other inventory account because I don't want two accounts again that are gonna confuse things. So I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna go back to my chart of accounts, accounting, and then my chart of accounts, uh, by the way, under the business view, that, that uh, chart of accounts is under bookkeeping. And then you've got your chart of accounts right here. If you wanted to check that out, see the chart of accounts, okay. So then I'm gonna go, okay, this inventory, I'm gonna make that one inactive. I don't need two inventory accounts. That's gonna confuse things. So make that one inactive. Why do you have redundancies in the accounts? For goodness gracious, you, are you trying to confuse me, QuickBooks? Are you trying to mess things up? Whatever. So there we have it. And then the reorder point, 
is going to be as of the end of the prior period because I'm going to start all of the new data January and January. So I'm going to paste that. So there we have it. Now, now once I enter this, what's it going to do? It's going to take, I'm going to put a little formula over here. You don't need to do this, but just to see what's going to happen, what I hope happens, we're going to say the cost, not the sales price. So I'm taking not the sales price, but the cost times the number of units on hand. And I'm going to copy that formula down and then sum it up, sum it up. And that's going to be the 2896. That should tie out to what we have here. So, right, that's the journal entry that it's going to do. And it's going to give us the sub ledger recording each of these units of, of inventory. That's going to increase inventory. The other side is going to have to go somewhere, which I'm assuming they're going to post to opening balance equity. So let's do it. Let's close it. Let's delete this. Let's save this. I'm going to say file, save as, so I can import it. I'm going to go to my desktop because that's where I hold all my stuff so it's, I can get to it right on top of my desk. I'm going to say this is going to be the Get Great Guitars and this is going to be my in my inventory items. Boom. Okay. I'll say continue it. I think it's trying to update from a really old Excel sheet and we're going to say okay. So now let's import it. So I'm going to go boom, import, just like we did last time. Now that I've got these, let's see if it works out. I think it will. I'm hoping. I'm hopeful. Desktop. We're going to go into the QuickBooks Online and the Get Great Guitars Inventory Items. That's the one. So we have an Excel sheet or CSV works. So that should work. Next. So now it's mapping. The mapping should, this is, this is giving us the line item within the system, QuickBooks. This is the headers of our Excel form. They should tie out exactly because we took the time to change the headers to match exactly what's in the system. If they're not exactly matching, then you can just line up the header to what is in the system as best you can. So the type matches exactly. The sales description matches. Sales price matches, of course that found this field, it found this field, these are matching the headers. So that looks good. Quantity, reorder, everything is checked off. We don't have sales tax because I haven't turned on sales tax yet. We'll do that next time. So that'll be a little bit more of a burdensome to do, but I think it'll help us to see how sales tax works. So now it's, we're gonna sell them, we are gonna buy them. We're gonna track them, meaning we're tracking the units of inventory. This is the name, which I kind of put the number here on it, but this is what's gonna drop down when I do the drop down. So I'm gonna keep this kind of abbreviation over here, which might more appropriately be in the SKU, but we'll keep that there. The type, uh, the type is inventory as opposed to a service item. So the sales description, this is the name. Notice that you can make these wider so you can see <laughs> what is going on here a little bit better if you want. Seeing stuff is nice. And then the sales price here, the income account, that's going to be the uh, sale of products. That's the income account. The purchase, the purchase description, same as the sales description. That's what shows up on the bills, expense form, check forms. The purchase cost, this is what we buy them for as opposed to sell them for. And that's what's going to be used to put it on the books. As, a, as an inventory asset, cost of goods sold is the expense account when we sell them, the quantity that we have on hand at this point per unit, and the reorder point, I'm just put zero, and then the inventory account, that's the inventory account, there's just one of them now because I made that other weird one that they had two of them inactive, and then the quantity on hand as of date, which is important because I don't want to have a journal entry in the system in the middle of the year I'd, have, I'd like to have it at the end of the last year so that it doesn't mess anything up in the current year. The other side, therefore, should go to an, an equity account when, when we record it one way or the other. Either it goes to the income statement and then to equity or it goes to opening balance equity directly. We'll see that in a second. Let's import it and see what it does. It says six of six products and service successfully imported. Woohoo! I thought no problems whatsoever. I was a little worried. Not really. I knew it would work. But in any case, here's your items down below. So we've got the inventory items now. 
We've got the quantity on hand. You can see the difference between your inventory and service items because the service items don't have any quantity and whatnot or cost. You can also sort by item if you so choose. So this way you can kind of see the inventory service items first and then the inventory items or the other way if you wanted to see the inventory items on top. So that looks good. Now, now that I have these on, on hand, a transaction must have taken place on the financial statements. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the tab up top and duplicate it. And I'm gonna right click on the tab again and duplicate it again, opening up our major two financial statements in these two tabs, the balance sheet and the income statement, which have now started to be constructed, at least the balance sheet has. So I'm gonna go then to, to the left uh, tab. We're gonna go then to our reports on the left and then the balance sheet reports if you're under the business view by the way the reports are in the business overview and then uh the reports so you can find the reports there if you're if you're following along in the business view and so then we can see in here that we have i'm going to adjust the date up top from 0101 uh well we could do it as of 12 31 22 uh, 123122 at the end of 2022 there's our transaction now notice i entered a transaction of that four dollars i'm gonna i'm gonna remove that because this should be our first transaction here so you shouldn't have anything in except for this uh this uh 2894 so obviously the inventory account went up the other side went into retained earnings i mean went into opening balance equity so i'm going to zoom in on that so if i click on it you can see what it did here it created the form using inventory starting uh, value so it kind of created a form this isn't a form we use all the time but it's still made like a form so quickbooks records transactions trying to find the related form so they they've got this form it didn't just use a journal entry in other words so remember when we enter information into the system if i hit the plus button we pick a form that is applicable if there is no form applicable, only then do we typically use a journal entry. Even if you're doing something kind of unusual, like entering beginning balances into the system, QuickBooks will still look for the appropriate form and then before defaulting to a journal entry. So you've got your forms here and, and they enter them into the system. Notice the split went to the other side. They put it to opening balance equity. So if I close this back out by going back to the report, and down to opening balance equity, there's the other side of the transaction. So it didn't record anything to the income statement, which is fine. It put it into this account right here, which we're gonna have to adjust for because we don't want something in opening balance equity. We're gonna put it into uh, an owner's equity because it's an, it's, an, it's an owner account and probably change the name from retained earnings, which sounds like a corporation account to uh, to owner's equity or something like that, which would be appropriate for a sole proprietor. We'll deal with that later. The point is we're in balance. The other side went to equity somehow, and that's good. If I do that for every account here, then equity as a total should come out to 77,896 after we're done, even though it'll be distributed in retained earnings, opening balance, equity, and possibly income, which we'll then have to adjust into the proper account at that point. Now, if I go to the tab to the right, just note if I go to the reports on the left-hand side again and go into the profit and loss, and I'm gonna go from 010123 to 123123, or let's go, well, I can do that. Let's do that. There shouldn't be any, I'm actually gonna delete this transaction because I think I recorded this by accident just to give a demonstration of an invoice. So I'm gonna go into this transaction and if you have this in there, I don't know how exactly I did this. I'm going to I'm going to uh, delete it. So you could you could go in here and just delete the transaction. Be careful deleting transactions, but we'll do that. So get that invoice out of there and then back. So we don't have anything in the profit and loss is what I'm trying to point out in the current year or in the prior year, 2022 to 123122. So remember, we want, if there was something in 2022 year in the income statement, I don't have a big problem with that. We'll see that happen because it'll roll into the equity or retained earnings as of January 1st, 2023. It'll be here in net income. It'll roll into the retained earnings, no problem. 
but and then we and then but what I want to have is a nice clean income statement as of 2023 which we still have at this point in time so it has done what we would expect it to do let's look at one more report here let's just use this tab and go down to the inventory inventory valuation summary let's look at that look at that one and as of uh well this date will work now we've got the units of inventory the quantity of inventory and then the total this is at cost that and that adds up to the 2896 which gives us the same number as is on the balance sheet that's the point we're tracking not only the dollar amount but also the units the sub ledger then if we take the units times the cost should tie out to what is on the balance sheet from the sub ledger